Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Blue Lotus Gardens. My name is Blue Phoenix. If you're new here, share my phone knowledge on plant care. What we are doing at my plant shop, Blue Lotus Gardens. If you like more information, it's located down below. Uh, my website is a blog where I share my phone knowledge, but also incorporate other people's uh, writings as well into it that are a little bit more knowledgeable in, in certain different areas. So with all the growth that you all have been um, able to uh, per help us with, we've definitely been able to contribute back into communities and doing that and, um, and have better research for uh, different plants that we found are a little bit more in need of research so um, and a little bit better to help explain it. So we've found different various people so you'll definitely be seeing more of that on our website. So with all the growth that you all have been um, able to uh, per help us with, we've definitely been able to contribute back into communities and doing that and, um, and have better research for uh, different plants that we found are a little bit more in need of research so um and a little bit better to help explain it so we've found different various people so you'll definitely be seeing more of that on our website i design uh, our merch it will be expanding uh, later on so we all so we also grow our own house plants and then various uh, veggies uh, and herbs as well so You'll be seeing more on our website. Uh, Patreon members uh, get first access to our more um, uncommon, rare plants called Plant Club. So there, that's that's down below if you are more interested in that. Um, all right, all right. So in today's video, I am sharing with you my seven favorite plants of the month of April. These plants have been really fun to grow um, and learn about. Some of them have been incorporated into our um, store, so that way um, for purchasing, I grow them all myself. Um, I use Fox Farm, so I've definitely uh, switched over to more of like a Fox Farm. I use Happy Frog, uh, that's just what I've liked, and um, I work each medium to its proper care for the plants, and then fertilize, and, then, and we started fertilizing with uh, Fox farm as well, so you'll be seeing more about that later on. These plants are just really um, something to look more into, and then also um, there's some that I just feel could better explain um, some questions that people might be having about certain types of uh, different species of the plant um, because they are different variations of it, and um, some sometimes people um, like little slight. Uh, hints might help really identify the plant better and uh, also help other people uh, with selling the plants. Um, I know that's just really where I always want to come from is like always being a helpful kind of source. Um, it's never to um, be hurtful or mean or any kind of like any kind of sort of that. So it's just like I just want to share my found knowledge and maybe help others grow as well. Okay, so there are two philodendrons, there are two um, hoyas, there are two chingonians, and one epipernum that I just <laughs> am so thrilled that it's finally growing. All right, so first I am going to start off with the philodendrons. Um, they are just have been easy to grow and then also they're just gorgeous on their own, their foliage, and then other things that I've been learning about them as well. And I also have a cheat sheet so that way I can better um, explain some things to you all. Okay, so I have here um, my Philodendron Painted Lady. Look how gorgeous it is. Um, I enjoy the red stem and how green and then also this like lime yellow that kind of fades into the green. Also bordering the foliage as well. The new foliage from what I've been learning it should uh, grow it should grow into a more of like a bright yellow and then fade it off into a green. So that's um, how I've learned that you can identify a painted lady because there are sometimes uh, various different ones out there and that way you 
might have a hard time identifying. Luckily, I was able to get this one from one of my Discord members. Um, she's just really awesome. So uh, definitely, uh, thank you for always like showing up to like the swaps and then um, bringing these amazing fun plants to not only just trade with me but with others as well. Um, yeah, and I've just really enjoyed this one. Let me get my little cheat sheet out here for it all. Because I found something that was really interesting on this. Um, so it means it requires um, partial to dapple shade. Uh, partial shade to full shade is uh, it's fine with it as well. Um, it's slightly acidic. Um, it says here like 6.1 to 6.5. Um, so Happy Frog has a really good like acidic balance to its soil. So I, I guess it's been really, that's why it shows really good um, growth progress for my philodendron. So that's just how I, uh, you know, done a little research and I've looked at other plants and other people's growth videos and I'm just like, this is what I want to do. So it's cold hardiness is, um, it says here 9B. So that would be um, in Celsius 3.9 and uh, negative 3.9, and then Fahrenheit would be uh, 25. It says it reaches its height up to two to four feet. Also, it spreads up to one to two feet. It's known for its unusual foliage color, evergreen, variegated, um, bright yellow with light green molting, um, and reddish pink petioles. So. That's the uh, description that they give, um, and then the, as you see the reddish pink petioles on the plant. So I think that's just really wonderful. It's a uh, humid. It's uh, it says it's uh, humidity tolerant. It is uh, toxic. It contains. It is toxic. It contains um, uh, this thing called ca calcium oxalate crystals, um, an irritant to the mouth and es uh, esophagus. So, which is really cool about this as well. It says like propagation methods and um, you could actually see. So it has like these uh, berries. And so the, the berries you can use the chemicals for it to germinate, which would be really, which would be really interesting to kind of look into. So. It needs excellent drainage. Its parentage, it says here, um, which if, 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 if for those of you who are nerdy like me about plants, um, it's burgundy and emerald green. That's what it says on here. So, let's see how the burgundy plant looks like. Okay, so I see the I see the foliage. I see it. It's like a blushing philodendron, red leaf philodendron, um, and then the other one, with the emerald queen, would be. Uh, does it say, does it show a picture of it? Um, well, I might put it up if I, if I see it. But that's one of my favorites, um, just to kind of like look into. The next one is uh, this variegated philodendron heteracium. I have chopped it up a little bit. Um, I make, um, for some of my plants that are a little bit like harder to find, I do usually include them into like giveaways and uh, or for the fun giveaways like that. So um, this is definitely a giveaway. There's definitely a giveaway that I'm I've give, I'm adding it to, so that's why it's a little chopped up. But it's grow it grows really fast. Um, it does really well in a grow tent. If you're just really looking for like that one plant that really just grows well and shows and shows great foliage and uh, like a better true foliage when it's in the grow tent. So that's how um, I would recommend it. But there's also it, it, there's also various other different uh, grow methods. Let me share with you all from my cheat sheet uh, from Dave's Garden. I'll leave all these links down below so that way you can also see this as well because um, I think it's great to always sh share this knowledge. I mean, you know, if it's always great to learn about these plants. Um, so it comes from the family Aracee. 
um, is a philodendron in a species is a uh, heteracium variegated oxycardium. Uh, the cultivar is Brazil. Um, if there's additional cultivar information, um, it is PP12956. So, <laughs> technical. And it was hybridized by Acosta um, and it was registered or introduced in the 2000s. Its water requirements are average water needs, water regularly, do not overwater. So for me, when I read that, um, that means um, like a, a slightly moist soil environment where you can kind of allow it to little have some drying periods, but don't allow it to dry up so much. Um, it's hard for some philodendrons or some plants overall to just really bounce back. Once they've been over water, they're just like, they're just, they kick the bucket, it's gone, no more. Um, their sun exposure is light shade, partial, or f to full, sh full shade. So, when I read that as well, I try to like, think of my home and the lights that are around in my home and where um, best it would be. So for me, in my home, a west facing window with like filtered light going through would be the best. That's because um, it's the sun hits just right over there and the shading is just great and I don't have uh, and I don't have any curtains but I do have blinds and I just really uh, allow them to kind of like filter some light through and it, it, it does really well there but if you really want to try show it's um, like variegation I would recommend like uh, some bright light from a grow light uh, that's really just where I've how I've seen it grow uh, I'm sure it does well like in other places um, it's foliage color is a chartreuse yellow its height goes from four four to six feet six to eight feet maybe spacing 24 24 to 36 inches uh, that's like 60 to 90 centimeters so its hardiness is zones 10a 10b and zone 11 so the plant is poisonous if it is ingested the bloom color is white, near white from what this is saying. Um, the characteristics are unknown so I can't really see it. It's soil pH requirements is a mild acidic neutral uh, requirement. So uh, as you see mine is in its original container and I just basically it's in this this is like cocoa choir peat moss type thing um and it, that's just where i come from i don't use peat moss in my plants so um i'm going to eventually move this out of here because it's a little bit like i think for me it's constricting the roots but as you see that's pretty much like a neutral base uh soil for the plant is that coca choir peat moss because it's just neutral it's slightly acidic uh, so after that i'm going to move it over to uh, my fox farm happy farm it does well and i've been fertilizing in my vlogs i'll talk more about that um, um, its propagation methods are by softwood cuttings or air layering and i've spoken about air layering before in various other videos so if you're interested in that um, i'll definitely um, see if I can include that above so that way you all can see make sure you check out the where's above here somewhere <laughs> the link so that way um, I post videos that you might find interesting um, and seed collecting it does not set seeds so this means the flowers are sterile or the plants do not will not come true from the seed uh, <laughs> What's really crazy about this is uh, where it says the plant is, is said to grow in outdoors. So it's said to grow in Bartow, Florida, Longanville, Georgia, Madison, Mississippi, McKins 
McKensport, Pennsylvania. So road trip, we're going over there and we're just going to check it out. <laughs> but that's just crazy how it, it says that it, it grows in those various locations. Those would be the, I, the zones according to what it said as well. And uh, this is also like, uh, this website helps contribute from other different members. So members are usually contributing to this website and help it um, with its research and understanding of different types of plants. So definitely there's comments on here. So if you want to look at that, you're more than welcome to look at it. Um, I recommend joining websites like these. You know, these are great websites if you're always trying to like understand plants and really like get to uh, learning about the species that you're holding and uh, and more okay so next i want to share my hoyas i'm really excited about these because they're just so amazing and pretty and just like i used to be someone that was not interested in hoyas i was just like what are those little like flimsy looking lead things that I'm not really interested about it. I was like, where's my philodendrons and my funky, funky begonias? And now I'm just like, I love everything. I want to learn it all. <laughs> but especially Hoyas because Hoyas just kind of like have that, like a little bit of like unknown sometimes. And you kind of have to like really um, look into some because I do have some that are like just spa. They're just species and I, because I don't, know what they truly are so i don't want to like say what it is, what it is i will include sometimes what it could be from the various different things that i found um so from hoyas uh, this is the one that i want to share with you all so like it's just i it's amazing if you saw my vlog i definitely raved about it a little bit on there because it's just so pretty and the, the, the delicateness of just the foliage is amazing. It, and how semi-succulent it is, I enjoy that a lot. Um, the original leaf, as you see here, it is pretty large. Um, the, the, old, the new growth of that foliage, though, um, when I was before I, before I received it, was a bit smaller. And then I place it in my grow tent and look at just how amazing that looks. Almost like it's uh, translucent with a bit of like sun stressing to it. I like, how can you not like Hoyas? <laughs> We're going to talk about more Hoyas and you're going to love them. But th these are just so pretty and look at that little vein. It almost looks kind of like uh, crocodile skin to, to me. <laughs> but I really like that and I just love how uh, pastel it looks so the fun fun fact of the Hoya um, Ishnopis I want to say it's the Ishnopis it could, I could be wrong in pronouncing it but the way it, it was Ishnopis <laughs> I'll write it on the screen for y'all um, from Vermont Hoya's found research um, they said that um, um, for it to kind of uh, flower and set bloom, um, it requires a more of like a cold hardiness to it in order for it to do, to enjoy that. It does, um, from what I was reading, it is from New Guinea, and it's just um, amazing how beautiful it is. In other uh, websites I was reading, the cold hardiness was like 10A, 10B. Um, but it was something that is not really like looked into because uh, from what I'm reading, uh, they were uh, saying how they received it as annoyed. And that's from like 2012, <laughs> you know, when the whole world was going to end. <laughs> so, um, and then it just like, he looked into it a little bit more and um, it will, he's, he's saying like it won't bloom under lights and that it, um, the flowers look a little bit more like the Hoya Canangiana. Um, but the, the, but the, it's like completely different. Um, it says that the Hoya Canangiana will bloom profusely 
and the lights and loves like warm conditions. Um, this Hoya, the Hoya Schnuppes, uh, it seems like more of like a cool weather kind of uh, Hoya. And I think that's really like what I was really into it because I was like, well, this winter I really want to like see and how um, it does. And so I also was looking into other websites and I found on Dave's Garden that um, on there someone uh, noted uh, on the comment that it does like a, a bit more of like colder conditions but in the winter time to make sure that it stays dry so i'm guessing because of this neutral type of soil environment that's really like um a great way for it to stay on the more like dry side but also uh thrive in the conditions that it is in i guess when you're still growing it like this but when you're i get when it's more fully grown out i will be definitely moving it over to soil and enjoying that process i already fertilized it so i think it's really uh, doing great um and i really just like water it um water it uh until it's like dry because wood really like holds on to that water so or that it really holds on to that moisture so that's really um i just and also enjoy how i also enjoy just how like aw how awesome it looks and how that sense dressing i love it's like unfurling its beauty like it's green you think it's all it's just gonna stay green no it throws off this really funky pattern it's like a completely different plant so cool so glad i found that and um i don't know if people i don't know the, the the sellers that ever watch my videos but shout out to all to all you sellers that i buy this from like i support like more like small um sellers so like that are you know like with their collections and, and learning a little bit more from them as well and just uh, there's like a Hoya that was that I have that was in their that was in one of the sellers' family for like over 20 years. They don't even know the name of it. So when we get to that, we'll get to that. There's a couple of those out there that I have. Next is the one in the only the Hoya snowcaps. Um, as you see, I did ride it with snow, as in snow, like the snow. But its uh, true name is S N O snow caps and that's um from the links that i was looking into um it does really well like in a grow tent environment i would say in a cabin environment as well um uh it's known for its uh snowy foliage and uh just really it's really showy it's showy because it's has that molted pattern to it um, of green and also that deep purple some reddish tint to that which is really just gorgeous the these it looks like it's it's dying it really does but it's not <laughs> and i it's just really wonderful i did manage to propagate this one and i found out that um they do better whenever you're they have the little like bumps on them so that's how i'm propagating now um and i do um just kind of like snip it off these are more like high valued um hoya i do try to find a medium to where i can offer it to people but once it starts growing like it just goes crazy um and you'll enjoy it you know like uh, if it if you do ever end up um receiving one of these they are great um i try to um i try to show its true foliage as much as I can and help others achieve that. Um, sometimes we can't and that's fine, but it does look great and it looks beautiful. So the soil, uh, this is from garden.org. Um, it is a full sun to partial shade plant, which I guess I could see that. Um, it does prefer um, semi moist soil. Uh, so soil pH premises, pH pH preferences would be like slightly acidic to neutral, um, cold hardiness to a 10A, um, which would be like 30 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 1.1 Celsius. 
Um, it trails to two to three feet, and it does does trail. So you add a little light trellis onto it, it will just go off. I've added one, and I've just barely clipped it on there, and it just took off. So imagine if it just really is like on a good trellis. Like that plant would be good. Flowers are uh, showy and fragrant. I have never seen the type of flowers. Um, it even says like the flower color is white. The bloom size is under one. Um, is that inches? Yeah, it's under one inches. Um, it's suitable locations. Is a house plant. Um, oh, it attracts hummingbirds from what it's saying. Um, it is humidity tolerant, it propagates by cuttings, it pollinates by moths and butterflies, flies, and various insects. So that's crazy that it does that. Um, I'll add the little flowers on here, they look really cute. They look like, um, like little white fuzzy cotton balls. <laughs> They're so cute. Someone actually has like a really huge uh, plant of this, but it's not like the, it does, so I guess if you like just keep it in normal lighting, it doesn't really showcase that purple tint to it. It just showcases more like a speckling of white, which is great, but I like how funky purple looks. I like that a lot. That's what I look for in Hoyas, the distinctive patternness of, of them all. Next, we are talking about syngoniums. Syngoniums are fun, easy to propagate house plants. They've just really been like more looked into this year, and I appreciate it. I love syngoniums. I think they're great. There's something that's just about a syngonium that is really unique to its foliage, and then also uh, there's just so many out there, and there's minis, there's tinies, there's longs, there's bigs. They come in very affordable affordable ones. They're a little bit more collectible ones. So it's just really great to have that um, spectrum in a houseplant that could really offer to, if for anybody really, because it's like you can collect one and have it is an affordable houseplant to even like a very highly desirable collector houseplant if you like so it's just really up to you but my favorites are the syngonium confetti so as you see it does embrace a little bit of like that dark green on the on the uh rim of the foliage and that's really just like how uh it really looks like without the lighting that I give it. I give it more like that high bright uh, row tent light. So it does, it does show a bit more of like this whiter foliage to it, but it is more known for like a greener pink pattern. Um, and it often is confused with a Syngonium milk confetti. I had to do a lot of research because I, I just wanted to be able to like know which one it is because I want to have like both of them. I I want to be able to like collect them all. You know me like gotta catch them all. Like that's just who who I am, and they are so pretty. Like how can you not like that? That's pretty. Um, but what I found is the way you can distinguish both of them from. Obviously, if one of them is a little bit more like. Uh, dark green foliage right um but also from the stem you can uh look into it right over here uh let's see where does it look right as you see here it does look like it's white but it would be uh pure more like a like my t-shirt um white if it was a milk confetti and if this is a this is a confetti so it does more like a green white pink freckles type on its um petiole stem over here like as you see this plant does need a little like alcohol rub down because you know it's, i don't know <laughs> sometimes plants they look at i just just i just get a little like scared and i just got do a little like this. Maybe that's not, but it's just how I am. 
Um, but yeah, that's just how I do it. And I really just enjoy this one because of how pretty it looks. And um, I believe I've sold one. I've been, I've, uh, but I'm just gonna keep growing this one and just really like eventually eventually grow it out as you see i keep it in a very more like moist soil environment and that's because it is in a high bright location with a high air circulation so definitely allows that kind of drying process to happen and allow it to like actually grow appropriately so cheat cheat time because i actually like these and i think i like i like sharing these websites with you all so if maybe you all like me to sh do a video on websites that maybe i find fascinating let me know in the comments down below i think that's great i i just like sharing plants with you all and i hope you all have been enjoying this little process um uh, So um, from garden.org, um, uh, it says that it's a partial to dapple shade, partial shade to full shade. Um, it's flowering time is year round. It's humidity tolerant. It is a toxic type of plant. It does contain calcium oxalate crystals. So um, definitely make sure you don't allow your pets uh, to ingest this or small children or just anyone with a curiosity of wanting to bite into a plant <laughs> it's propagation methods oh it does so it's seeds from berry i'll have to look into that you know uh, we're starting to grow our house plants by seed and i think that is wonderful you know i just don't just want to grow our own house plants you know um, it also propagates by stem cuttings, which I have uh, done that. Um, I've been slowly growing this out until I eventually place this in some three gallon containers so I can properly like trellis it, and pop propagate it, and make various different uh, plants from that. And that's how I uh, do my um, plant club. So definitely that's where these usually, I was, we're definitely looking, we were definitely looking to syngonium. So a lot of syngoniums were um, offered in my plant club. Um, it is a sport of regional red from what it says. So and from the pictures that I'm looking at it, it's like definitely it shows more like uh, that green and that's just because I, I um, because you know not, not everybody has a grow tent and can place it in there and look like this, but that's how um, it looks. And its actual true colors looks more like a full-on pink with like green and white speckling. Looks cool. Okay, so the next syngonium that I want to share with you all is my Syngonium Strawberry Ice. Look at that variegation. Oh my god, it's still not like ready to be propagated. Um, it does have little bumps here and there where, um, as you see, that's where you want to propagate underneath. Um, I might sh do um, a video where I share with you all how to propagate it, but from right now, um, what I'm doing is kind of getting those aerial roots to kind of like emerge more so it's easier to propagate. So that's, that's it on it. Um, and what I do is I just basically do that. And I'm just gonna like air layer it so that way um, it grows better um, and also with bigger foliage oh, it's just so pretty i have not been able to find so much like information on this one um this one just looks this one is just like i guess like one of those that is just really like highly um sought out for but hasn't really like been a lot of like looked into i like the fact that it has a nice like funky variegation pattern to it not many people like this one but um I enjoy it. It does like a little bit more of like a high humidity. Um, uh, there was a 
member of mine that um, recommended that and so um, I did and it sort of just like push off growth like crazy so thank you for that recommendation I appreciate everyone's recommendations on how to grow plants better um, but yeah um, I don't really know too much like origin or parentage of it um, I do know that it's just really highly desirable there is different uh, mutations of it so there's like a galaxy there's uh, Japan um, and they are different types of uh, patterns to their foliage um, and also I believe that Japan has more of that like pointy foliage so it, it bubbles out and points at the very tip. So that's how I've been able to identify different ones. Um, I love Syngonium's like I said and it, I just really enjoy collecting them and sharing with you all. This Syngonium I actually received this one from like one of my supporters and she was like it's it was dying on her and I was just like give it to me. So I gave it to me and it just it started doing really well. Um, but yeah. Our last plant is going to be my <laughs> Epipernum um, Albo, look at this little one. This one has been so hard to grow. It just did not want to push off any growth for the life of it. Um, I actually received two little cuttings like this. Um, the other one did not make it. It just, it put off a growth and it, all of it just died off. I was like, what? what? <laughs> so that's what happened. Um, but this one's the Epipernum Albo. The one that has like nice like white variation to it, this is so tiny. <laughs> but um, eventually it'll get bigger. I have it in my grow tent and um, I think it just needs a little bit more like a heavy fertilization in order to really like push off new growth. Like I know Syngoniums like to be heavy fed and I know, um, I guess we're going to see if maybe this Epipernum wants to be fed like with a like with a, with a heavy feed to it. So we're going to talk about the um, different features of the Epipernum panatum albo variegata. Um, I believe this is some of more like highly seeked out plants just for its beautiful foliage, easy to care um, requirements. Once it starts to really grow and trellis, you just it takes off. So the origin of so the origin of the plant um, is, is from. Uh, the, rain, the tropical rainforest of Southeast Asia, and it belongs to the Araceae uh, family. What's really cool about this um, plant is that uh, the size of the leaves can go, go to like anywhere from like 30 to 50 um, centimeters long. So I think that's really cool to like see it grow that big. And the height of the plant is uh, it can be anywhere from like 15 to 20 um, um, meters. So that's like really tall like it just can grow uh water requirements or i really just think it just likes that kind of like semi-moist soil i always recommend people kind of like grabbing it and then just like gauging by how heavy it is you know the heavier it is the more moisture it's rotating so that way um you know that really kind of helps understand the moisture balance in your plant you would like uh, more of like a bright and direct lighting heavy filters light dapple uh, nothing direct though it will burn it this is a, a toxic type a toxic plant so it is not pet friendly so make sure it's not you, you don't um, allow someone to ingest this or have a pet that ingests this it likes very like well aerated soil um, and a, a more like neutral semi uh, acidic uh, soil range would be great for it as well um, and uh, what I was reading from it is that it doesn't really require like a much heavy uh, fertil fertilization if the f it does great from the nutrients that it absorbs from the soil um, it, it might do it might do well with like a monthly fertilizer um, but nothing really like incre like crazy intense for it to like in that it needs. Alright everyone, thank you so much for joining me on today's video and uh, just letting me ramble about my favorite houseplants of the month of April. I think these are great, they're wonderful, they're beautiful houseplants. Um, I'm learning more about them and love sharing them with you all about what I learned. Um, it just, I think it really helps just a lot of people like look into different types of 
um, species that they might be interested in and also um, better understand some that are they are that they might already have um, as always I always want to mention thank you so much to our patreon members uh, for just being super supportive um, and just really helping me grow with like the plant shop and everything else that I was involved with it also um, all the new members and then also all the new subscribers I really appreciate that as a lot and I um, appreciate you all helping me grow this channel there'll be more videos out I um, post vlogs and then I also post about different types of plant care that I have uh, found out and would like to share with you all also if you maybe want to shop and support our, our, our plant shop we have it on there as well um, and other various types of support as well so thank you all so much for joining me today. You all have an amazing day. Thank you again. Bye.